Welcome everybody and welcome to our webinar uh, about COVID-19 and uh, fraud insurance. I'm Florence N. I'm Data Science Manager at Shift and I will be your moderator for uh, this webinar. Um, before we start, two information. Uh, the first thing is that there will be a Q&A uh, at the end of the session. Uh, so don't worry if you have some questions. Uh, you can just write it in the console. Uh, you should see the GoToWebinar console. Uh, if you're not familiar with this uh, console, uh, one of the parts of the console is about questions. And if you don't see the console, maybe you see a red arrow. If you click on the red arrow, uh, you will open the console and then see the question part. All these questions uh, will be asked at the end of this uh, webinar. If you have any technical issue, don't hesitate uh, to contact us via the questions or anything, anything else to contact us. And last but not least, uh, this webinar is being recorded and uh, you will uh, receive a link to the on-demand version uh, within 48 hours. So, uh, as I said, I'm Florence N. Uh, I'm Data Science Manager at Chief Technology. So my role uh, is to lead the team of data scientists working for EMEA uh, to make the best algorithm possible uh, for our customers and uh, responsible for the performance uh, of these algorithms. And today, I'm pleased to have with me uh, Laurent Kayen. Uh, and maybe, Laurent, you can introduce yourself. Uh. Yeah, of course. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, so I'm uh, Laurent Kayen. I am a fraud advisor for PMV uh, Insurance Company Group. Uh, now I work uh, for several years now for the PMV group, uh, at least five, and uh, last two of them uh, as fraud advisor. Now, PMV uh, is a Belgian insurance company uh, within the top ten of the of the biggest companies on the on the market. So, voila. Thank you, Laurent. Um, before we, we start and before I, I, I uh, give you the stage, uh, Laurent, a few words uh, about Shift. So Shift Technology uh, is a company that's been founded in 2014. Uh, we provide to our customers an AI native fraud detection solution and also claims automation solution. Uh, we work with more than 80 insurers uh, all over the world uh, within 25 countries so far. Uh, we have around 300 employees, uh, and more than 100 of them are data scientists. Uh, so you can see how much we are focused on uh, machine learning, uh, AI, and so on. Uh, before uh, li leaving the stage to, to Laurent, two words about COVID-19 and the way we've seen that uh, at Shift. Uh, the first thing is that as we work on a lot of different geographies uh, with different contexts, uh, we we had to adapt, to adapt of, to all of these geographies with the uh, local context, local regulations, local lockdowns, and so on. And uh, more than adaptation, I, I would say that this period was for us uh, a real challenge and also an opportunity. A challenge uh, because, uh, as you may have heard in the news, uh, some AI algorithms uh, add a lot of problems with this period because AI means uh, gets used uh, to uh, what is going on uh, on a classic situation to try predicting the future. But in the lockdown situation, that was something that was never seen before. And uh, AI algorithms were not ready to face this situation. And for example, companies like Amazon uh, had trouble with their recommendation system, but also with their logistics system, with the stocks and so on. For example, it's not because you will you, you buy a stock of uh, 50 uh, surgical masks that you want to buy further uh, surgical things. And that was uh, the recommendation uh, algorithms was trying to, to push you. So our role at Shift was to uh, keep control on these algorithms, make sure that everything was going well, uh, everything was fine. And that was the challenge. And the opportunity was that, of course, when you have uh, such a change, uh, you, you have some, more, some new things that are appearing and new things here around uh, fraud insurance. We've spotted uh, new behaviors on each of the lines of business uh, during the lockdown and what we see now is after the lockdown. But uh, for, this, uh, for this thing, it's uh, up to, to Laurent to, uh, to describe us all the, the use cases he, 
he has faced uh, during the, the past uh, month. But maybe before going uh, deep into details within a few concrete cases, uh, Laurent, could you tell us uh, what has been uh, the crisis under that PNV and uh, are things back to normal today? Well, uh, to answer that question, we have to face both sides of, uh, of it. Uh, first of all, uh, regarding the organization, well, everyone went down as uh, in home working. There was no physical, uh, uh, no physical presence at the at the office. Um, so there was a huge uh, change in uh, mindsets uh, for all of us, and uh, a huge uh, difference also in the way of work. Uh, what we see is that there was a very lower amount of uh, new files that we received, but how bizarre it can appear, uh, at fraud uh, departments uh, it was exploding. So we had a huge, huge, huge uh, upgrading of the number of files that we have to, 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 to handle uh, during the past months. Okay. So, Everything is normal at the moment? No, not at all. We still have the backlog of the uh, last weeks, but furthermore, we are still uh, mainly in, at homework at this moment, um, and the end of it is not foreseeable. Okay, okay, so thanks for this uh, general update. And now uh, let's go through a few concrete cases uh, that you've been facing uh, at PNV. Uh, yeah. Oh, that was for uh, sort of global presenting. update on PNV, yeah, and yeah, maybe uh -huh. a first case. So I leave you the, the floor, Laurent. Yeah. So uh, we, uh, I prepared several cases to explain on how we are working uh, with shifts in our fraud uh, detection, and which cases are uh, interesting for investigation. So the first of it is. Uh, an owner of a building, so we insured uh, the building uh, against uh, fire, theft, and so on. And the building uh, has uh, is used as a pizzeria. The pizzeria is rented to uh, to another guy, and uh, at this moment uh, the renter has no VAT registration. Still, uh, nevertheless, he has his uh, restaurant for several months already. And on the 12th of March, the restaurant burns down. At 11 p.m., so the last day before the complete lockdown, which was announced, the lockdown was announced, was foreseeable, and just at this moment, uh, the, the restaurant burns down. Now, with shifts, we 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 figured that the renter had already a fire a fire damage in the in the past, and um, furthermore, the renter claims a own damage from the owner. So the renter claims damage from our insured. Now you have to know that in our regulation, uh, the renter is, no, is normally liable for all damage uh, to, the, to the building and has to settle the claim of the owner. So here we have a, a reversion of, of all the regular regulation. And uh, our experts stated that the fire started probably in the electrical panel. Furthermore, the owner and the renter are in a dispute for rent arrears, so the renter doesn't pay his rent at all for several months already, and uh, the renter claims 50,000 euros uh, for defect in the building. So we have a lot of issues here. Um, a renter who doesn't pay his rent, a renter who claims 50,000 euros for defects in the building for his own damage, a fire starting in the electrical panel so it's really easy to start to light up the fire at this at a place um, and uh, yeah the f a fire at, at a, a moment that isn't really uh, very surprising so the investigation is still ongoing at this moment but we are quite positive about uh, about the ending of it um, but it's some some kind of file that we are really at the uh, attentive for now, as you can see, a second file that we prepared, Florent, if you want to, yeah. is here. I showed you some pictures because it, it's really interesting. So we have an insurer that's uh, got two barber shops. 
Both of them were closed during the lockdown. The thieves broke uh, the door at the uh, entrance of the, of the building. Uh, they stole scissors, tools, and several products. But as you can see on the pictures, the thieves were very clean. They left no trace of anything except at the front door. But when they, are, uh, when they stole um, stuff, they were kind enough to, stole, uh, to, uh, to steal material, but leave the boxes on the floor. Instead of taking the boxes with them uh, for, the, for the shavers, for example, also the products, uh, everything was clean. Nothing at all was on the floor. So really clean. If someone steals at my place, I would like to have the same, the same thieves because they were very clean. If you, want, yeah. if you want to. Um, so they left the boxes of the new tools. Um, and what we had for information is that uh, our insured, so as explained, has two, had two barber shops. One of them was definitely, definitely, definitely closed during the lockdown for economic reasons. So his shop was all going bad before the lockdown. And what did he did during the lockdown was taking all his material from the closed barber shop and placed it into the new one, okay. uh, into the second one, which was stolen. We have no invoices for the stolen stuff in the shop. Everything was bought, uh, bought without invoice. The supplier cannot present any invoice of it. And there's no claim for stolen cash nor money. So here again, we have an independent uh, barber shop whose business is going badly and um, who cannot prove anything about stolen stuff because he has no invoices and he has no, uh, there's no trace of, 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 of the theft of it. Um, you can turn it how you want. There's no proof of any theft. So here again, uh, the case is still ongoing and is still uh, being uh, investigated. But it's both of them are typical COVID-19 cases. You have insured who needs, uh, for some reason, cash on an urgent matter because they are both without any income at some point, some some moment, and they have to find money just to feed, to to be fed, to 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 pay the invoices they receive, and so on. And this is this is typically the, the, the kind of files that we are looking for uh, regarding COVID-19. People who are going madly, uh, financially spoken then, and are looking for money uh, on a short base so they can go on with their life without knowing when the lockdown was going to take an end at that moment. No. So... Uh, Laurent, you, you said the pictures uh, were too clean uh, to be real. Uh, is it something you look at usually, or uh, was it uh, some pictures selected random randomly? Well, no, 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 no. This, there were the pictures that were sent by our insured. So uh, normally, usually, when when we have a big theft, we send an inspector to 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 to. To take some photographs, but when a thief just enter your shop, enter your house, and and you are taking pictures of it, you see that everything is overwhelmed. Uh, all mm -hmm. all things are on the floor. Uh, the, the the all all the all the locks are open, and so on and so on. They are searching for what they need, and here you see that everything was clean, everything was on their place, uh, yeah, on the several boxes, uh, two, three boxes that were, on, that were on the ground, but there's nothing on the floor. So they opened uh, lockers without doing anything, without searching anything, or they knew what they wanted and they knew where to find it, and it did go very fast, or they didn't search. So it's one uh, it's one way or another way, but it's not normal when you don't know the place and you are entering not for the first time, but maybe the second or third time as uh, as you went first as a client. Well, you don't know where everything is, can be found, so you are searching everywhere and you leave everything where you searched for it. Here, when you see the picture, Florent, if you want uh, to go back one one slide. Uh, when, when you take a look at the pictures, you see that everything, everything, everything is clean. Uh, 
Yeah, and the only trace of uh, of the forcing the, forcing the door you can see is on the front side, and the door lock itself is quite clean. So even there, you can easily go with a uh, with a screwdriver and force it yourself once the door is open, and there is nothing else to see. Nothing. The, the chairs are even in place. Uh, all all the doors are closed at the inside, so everything is too clean to be real. So okay. these are the things that we are looking for. Yes, that's good tips if we have some uh, investigators uh, listening to us. And uh, you yeah. said that the pictures were sent by uh, by the insured, uh, but oh, how were you uh, dealing with the on-site investigation during the lockdown? Was it possible or not? Uh, what did you do? Well, uh, on-site investigation wasn't really possible, so we did it uh, when possible by email uh, with our clients, and if not possible, we waited until the end of the lockdown to, to go visit uh, on uh, on the place. So here we did it by mail. We asked the worker, we asked I'm sure to send us pictures with the metadata in it, so we can see uh, we were able to see when the pictures were taken. Um, and yeah, then, then you say something like that, so the insured has some explanation to give. Okay. Okay, and and one more question. Uh, here we've, uh, we've reviewed two cases where uh, it was about some businesses. Uh, have you seen uh, suspicious cases where uh, people were uh, moving from an house to another one and uh, reporting a burglary? Uh, but maybe regulations were not uh, authorizing them to move from place to another. Uh, what, was it something happening in uh, Belgium? Um, probably yes, but we didn't have any case of it. Uh, there were no really uh, moving wasn't easy to do uh, during the lockdown in Belgium. So uh, you could do it on illegal way, but uh, if you are theft when you are moving illegally, it's not easy to explain. <laughs> Okay, so I don't know how it went with my colleagues, but we didn't get any case of that kind. Okay, thank you for your feedback. Um, then I guess we can go to the next case. So, yeah, the the third case is 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 a amusing one. So you have to know that. Um, so this is a private. It's not a. It's not a company that we're insured. It's a private person, and you have to know that uh, we have some particular uh, particularities in our uh, insurance um, products. So you can insure a car for his catalog price, and you will be indemnished, settled on that base while everybody knows that when you buy a car you have some discounts that are not taking accounts for the settlement of the case so what do we have here it's a private customer that uh, has his car completely burned out he gave us some pictures that was uh, very informing so on your left you see the car burning like hell in the middle the result of it and on the right side, uh, also the result of it, but as a big picture. Uh, so what does it say? We are insuring a Hyundai Tucson for 32,000 euros. Car was burned at the, the, at the end of the lockdown. During the product, we are selling 37,000 euros, while new, the car was paid 32,000 euros in 2017. So Due to the program, uh, due to the, our product, you have to figure that a client receive more settlement for his car than that he paid, and he was driving already two and a half years with a car. It's mm -hmm. difficult to to explain uh, even to police officers, uh, but that's the reality. And now, when you see the picture, what are you seeing? Well. Everyone is parked on the left side of the street. There is a park. Uh, in the, uh, there is no authorization to park the car on the right side of the street. And when you see the car of an insured, it's the only one parked on the right side, far enough from the other cars so that there could be no harm on them, and far enough from the 
the houses, so uh, also the houses cannot be damaged. Now, the particularities of the claim, you will see them on the second uh, slide for the case. Um, here, we know that the origin of the fire was criminal. There was no other car really nearby, so only, only, only that car could be damaged, uh, was parked on the wrong side of the road. And uh, the inter interesting part for us is that we knew that our insured, in fact, we discovered that our insured divorced shortly before the fire and also lost his job bef uh, shortly before as a security officer. So he's there without any job, without his wife. So there's a lack of income from the wife. Um, he has two children that he has to take care of and he was security officer. So he knows about security, he knows about uh, handle some, uh, some things to make them pass easily. Now, there was still a funding on the car. He had to pay 300 euros a month during five years. So still two years to go. And for a total amount of 17,000 euros to pay. Uh, so that was a, a further information that was interesting because you have someone who hasn't the who lost his job, who lost his wife, who lost some uh, a huge amount of his income, and he still has to pay for his car. Now, at the moment of the fire, our insured was not at home. He was visiting his parents, who are living several kilometers further away, and the car was alone. So the first question is, how did he get uh, to his parents without his car? What was, a locomo uh, what was his locomotion? And uh, when the fire starts, it is a neighbor that uh, informs, that calls um, 112, so, uh, the fireman, and uh, that called our insured to say there's a problem uh, with the car. So all of it uh, means that the, 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 the fire is really suspicious um, and that there is a, a very big problem with it. So uh, this all to say that COVID-19 has not only impact on professional customers, but also on private persons uh, that are looking for money when they need it. Mm. And so we guess that uh, financial crisis following the lockdown period uh, will hit hard. Do you have any insights, any expectations around uh, the fraud activity uh, after the lockdown and uh, for the for the following month? What do you think about it? Well, um, yeah, it's it's an interesting question because uh, the lockdown is going uh, is is going at its end. Uh, was ended some weeks ago now, and you, we see that the same cases as within the lockdown are still going coming up. So it's at this moment, there's no, we don't see really a movement of type of cases, uh, but they will certainly happen without any doubt. There, there will be a move of cases. It's just that at this moment, it is too soon to, to, to see what's, how inventive our insurance will be. And how it will be replaced in uh, in uh, in, uh, in the following weeks. Okay. Okay. So thank for thank you for your answer. Um, yeah, that was the the last cases you you wanted to show us. Uh, so we will uh, go to the Q and A part. Uh, so once again, uh, on the console you have on your screen, you can write some questions and. We can ask these questions uh, to Laurent or either to, to me if you want any uh, data insights, uh, I would say. Uh, and uh, we, yeah, we have a first question. Uh, first question concerning uh, the line of business. So Laurent, what, hmm. what is for you the line of business uh, with the biggest risk uh, during the lockdown and uh, after the lockdown? Um. Well, in strictly amounts, uh, we uh, it will be um, build, uh, buildings. 
thefts and uh, fire uh, fireplaces in buildings. That will be the the the, the most important case, uh, just because uh, when you have a house or any building that are completely uh, total lost, we have a regular uh, relocation program, so people are never without any roof upon their head. So that will be the most important line of business. We okay. are talking about huge amounts. We are talking about uh, a good coverage. Um, so, so yeah, that, that will be the most important part. Yeah, okay. What, what we think at Shift uh, regarding that uh, is also that the, uh, as the, the crisis is beginning now, uh, we expect to have first the companies being in uh, difficulty and uh, then trigger, it triggers some uh, further activity and maybe uh, later on uh, after the companies having difficulties it would probably be the people uh, having difficulties and then a second wave of fraud uh, more concerning more the, the people themselves rather than the, the companies. Um, yeah, another question no. Uh, what was the, the workload uh, of your team during the, the lockdown? Because uh, we know that there were less claims, uh, at least for uh, auto. Uh, so what was the activity? Was it uh, equal to pre-lockdown or was it kind of low? No, no, it was uh, surprisingly twice the regular workload. Okay. So we doubled the uh, workload. Big upon? What, what, why such an activity? What was the reason? I really have no idea. Um, there are several uh, several explanations possible. Uh, first of all, uh, people needed money. So uh, they tried what they could do uh, at the time that they had the opportunity to do it for once, uh, for one. And the second explanation is that uh, since there were uh, less workload for all the regular claims handlers, they were more attentive uh, for signs of fraud, I guess. And that's the reason why we had uh, a double double workload and yeah, uh, Shift helped us also with uh, se uh, specific scripts for COVID-19 fraud issues. So we had three possible ways uh, to getting uh, with more income of uh, work. So for yeah, the workload was doubled. Yeah, and, uh, that's a good transition with the next question, which is: uh, uh, Did you see any particular advantage to use uh, an automated uh, fraud detection solution during this period, or or not? <laughs> of course, uh, of course, there was a, a real. Uh, added value of it. Uh, first of all, because uh, Shift is able to detect several uh, scripts and several things that we aren't able to do it manually. Uh, second of all, is that uh, the, yeah, the rapidity of uh, of the programmation with Shift is uh, was very quick, and uh, they were able to 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 react fastly on uh, on our demands and saying okay this is uh, something we have to take care of this is something about uh, which we we have to take care of and yeah you wrote uh, you guys wrote all, all the scripts uh, based on uh, one recommendation from our part but also uh, recommendations you 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 appointed yourself so uh, it was uh, it was really a win on short notice uh, for us yeah, okay. And, that's yeah, question. That, that's uh, from Shift's perspective. Yeah, what, what we've seen is that the so we have a lot of different clients and um, their activity, the, the workload they had was really different from one to another. Uh, so we had uh, some of our customers, uh, just like uh, you, Laurent, uh, that, that were um, uh, that had a kind of a regular activity or more than the regular activity. And some of them that were that were uh, uh, like alpha employed uh, just because uh, there were less claim and then less claims to review and so on. And uh, one of the advantage was that thanks to uh, an automated detection solution, you do not depend on uh, 
on some contextual things, uh, such as uh, there is a storm, then uh, the whole uh, claim and link team is focusing on this storm and there is no more uh, fraud detection. Uh, there is COVID-19 and then because of the lockdown, uh, the, vol the volume is becoming too low. Uh, in that case, we can adapt and we can move the, all the threshold of the, the algorithms to make sure the, uh, the number of alerts uh, you, you get every single day is uh, what you expect to get. And it can depend on the, the period uh, we are. And uh, the, yeah, the second thing was to uh, the challenge to adapt the fraud scenarios, uh, algorithms we have to the, the context and uh, do some specific scenarios related to COVID-19. Um, OK, so let me check the, the questions. Uh, No. Okay, so other questions were similar to the ones uh, I just asked you. So if there is no new question, I, I guess uh, we are done for this webinar. A few last seconds for um, if anybody has a, has a last question. Okay, so I, I think we are good. Um, thanks a lot, Laurent, for uh, for your uh, your insights, all the insights you shared during this uh, this webinar. Uh, don't know if you you want to add anything else uh, before leaving us. Uh, yeah, it was my pleasure, and thank you for the invitation. Thank you, thank you, Laurent. Uh, thank you to to all the attendees for your time. Uh, we hope that this webinar was. Uh, uh, was helpful and provided you uh, some insights that will help you uh, for your day-to-day -day job or for all the, the your activities related to uh, to any uh, fraudulent uh, claims. So thanks a lot. Thanks again, and uh, see you soon. Thank you. Bye.